welcome back. We have had our lunch. Well, some of us have. Other people are probably just going to sip on some paint while we while we sip here and, and drink. Um, but uh, this is just going to be a very informal session. We're going to have somebody um, manning the chat, I think. Right, Kenny? Yeah. And uh, so you'll be able to ask us questions. And uh, we're just going to be working on some models that we have that are currently works in progress for each of us. Now, uh, Vernon is going to be working on some of the uh, GKR models, yep. uh, the heavy hitters, uh, the the support crew, uh, yep, so to speak, faction, for, for the blue faction, for what are they Thunder called? Happy. Thunder Happy. And uh, so he's going to be working on some of those. Um, we also have another camera set up to where we can do some close-ups every once in a while so you can see the, a little bit more in detail what we're doing. But um, I'm going to be working on my 8th edition Marines, Primaris Marines. I've painted them with a uh, Dark Angels theme, or, or at least that's... and where you got it and it might help out just a little bit as a start so you got paints what do you mean you got paints you got some citadel paint over there i see oh yeah yeah, yeah. Right. no I'm, I'm using mostly citadel paints um and he built a nice fancy workbench thing actually this isn't so this is something that i took out of one of my games that i don't need this for That's actually a nice workbench thing for yeah, painting kind of not really <laughs> Okay. But it's it's definitely not for painting, that's for sure. But anyway, yeah, I've just got a bunch of Citadel paints, and um, and I, I did a, a dark base coat of what, I don't even know what the color it was called. I don't remember. Uh, warp. Not Warpstone Glow. It was Caliban Green. Oh, yeah. So this had a uh, base coat of Caliban Green uh, that we airbrushed. Vernon showed me how to airbrush. And that is still, right now, the only time I've ever airbrushed. Um, and then I did a dry, dry brush of uh, Warpstone Glow over this. So that's all I've done to these models. I haven't done a whole lot at all. Okay. So uh, we're also going to be doing some uh, lead belcher for the weapons. And then I've also got some um, Ushtabi Bone and uh, Screaming Skull for the crests that are on their chest, the little winged crests and skulls and everything like that. So that's mainly what I'm going to be working on today. What about you? I will be doing, like you said, the GKR support um, drones for the blue faction. Um, but ever, I have a bunch of these things over here. I don't know what this game is. You're making me paint them. Um, but I have not making you do anything. <laughs> I started on mostly uh, the broad stroke details, um, pants, swords, boots, all this it, kind of stuff, skin tone. He, he took the Plague Marines from the Dark Imperium. Yes, uh, that's what they are, Plague Marines. Box set for uh, 40K 8th edition. And, um, so I started on these. <clears throat> And, and obvious, honestly, I've never played Plague Marines before. They, they gross me out, to be honest. Uh, but uh, I, So I don't know what any of these guys are called. But they're a, a, a troop choice in one of the, uh, in the Plague Marines faction. Yes, and I'm glad or, I got them because I've actually enjoyed painting them. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, they have a lot of detail on these miniatures. Yeah, they I'm do. I'm really surprised. Um, so, so I just I, I did want to point out, so you have a, a nice Grumbrach uh, yeah. Grumbaker. Yep. brush 
And what's the other one? Oh, nice. This is just brush. a this is just a starter brush. You actually get these in their their starter kits for for painting sets. So nothing really fancy there. This I just picked up at at uh, Michaels for a few bucks. Okay. So again, not not a whole lot of uh, detail here. Most of my brushes are from Michaels. However, I do have some Rosemary yeah. and Company um, brushes. This one I'm falling in love with, and that's why it's almost dead. That's it's disgusting. A, it's a two O. And then this one is a one. That's not right. Yeah. Well, it's really nice and keeps its point, so I like it. But that's, I just wanted to get it out there. I mean, I'm using a ton of different paints. Um, actually, I've got paints over here where you can't see. Um, but I use almost every single brand that is out there. <laughs> I have yeah. every single. I really like these. They're so easy to control how much how much paint you're getting out and all yes. that kind of stuff, yeah. and they don't make a huge mess. Some of the sometimes the pots, and it's probably because I don't use them very well, um, but sometimes those pots just uh, they get gummed up like you see you see right here. Oh yes, uh, yeah. on the backside they get gummed up real easy down there. I spent a few moments, uh, well a few minutes rather, uh, this morning cleaning some of my pots off. Ah, uh, so you would look all nice like you'd never painted well, before in yeah, your life. Yeah, that's that's it. No, mine yeah, actually exactly. look like I'd use them. Well, I might do too. <laughs> I just cleaned them up a little bit. All right. Well, I guess we'll just get started. Yeah, we'll yep. get started. And, Wait, and again, just gotta... I have a couple questions. Okay, uh, go ahead. One of them is uh, why, when airbrush, when brush? Like, why would you do one versus the other? Well, uh, well, uh, okay. Here, here's the thing. I don't know that much about airbrushing to begin with, but. Even when I airbrush right now, it's really more just for base coating. Mm -hmm. I have absolutely no expertise in airbrushing, and that's all I've ever used the airbrush for is to base coat. Um, Vernon, however, I think goes a little bit further than that, so he might be better person to ask. Yeah, so I ended up using I'm the- I'm gonna get started. Yeah, I ended up using the airbrush um, when I first started out for base coating, um, basically because I didn't want to see brush strokes in some of the things that I was using. Mm. Um, so like, you know, I mean, that's a lot of work that yeah. you would have had to put in brush work yeah. where when we did it with the airbrush, it took us maybe half hour yeah. to do all those in green. Correct. Um, the same with my play, uh, play guys here. Um, I did their skin tone and it was over in a matter of a couple minutes. Uh, you can get into finer detail. However, miniatures like this, you're not going to be using an airbrush for finer detail. You're going to be using um, like 18 over zero brushes and two over zero. Um, and those are the smaller, finer tip brushes um, to get in there. However, if you guys had seen the Mythic Battles um, playthrough that we've done and the review, uh, I know you um, had some more of the miniatures out. A lot of the gods in that set were um, primed and detailed in um, broad detail in airbrush because it's just, there's too much and it, it makes the paint. Uh, what do I want to say? It seems to go on thinner. Uh, there's no seams kind of deal. I just like it. I don't know. No, yeah, that's yeah. that's very true. I mean, honestly, there's not. Well, I mean, there is actually a difference between uh, uh, spray painting and airbrushing as well. Well, yes, because, because you, you have the, the, um, the the consistency and the thickness of the uh, the the spray in an air uh, airbrush. Com versus one from a spray paint can. Mm -hmm. uh, rattle cans, the, the consistency is going to be a lot thicker than airbrush. Right. Um, and that's even when you're dealing with paints. Like if we had decided to use Apple paint from Walmart today versus these um, acrylics from Citadel or Vallejo, or, mm -hmm. it's, it's a different consistency. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, so. Any, even, even even with tester, you see a difference, right? Yes. Well, tester has um, they're they're um, I think a more alcohol based, and mm -hmm. that's more because that the type of plastic they go onto, because those tester models are different. Yeah. They are different. I hope that answered your question just a little bit. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to start. And the bases are part of the miniature, or are they separate? Yeah. Let's talk about bases, Vernon. <laughs> yeah. So the basis for the um, for almost every single Citadel uh, Games Workshop miniature are separate. Um, actually, I have a few. Oh, you actually brought the bases with you? No, I didn't bring the bases with oh, me. Oh, okay. As you can see, there they are. This is what the 
miniatures come like, well, I mean, they don't come green. This is a color I pre-mixed and um, airbrushed all of these. But the bases are not ever attached to the miniatures. Um, you end up gluing them onto after the fact. However, if you look at uh, pre-production miniatures like, or well, post-production miniatures like um, this from GKR, they're already attached to the bases and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. However, I didn't actually bring any basing material with me today, um, but there is a, an entire line of basing material from multiple different companies yeah. uh, to give you different effects. Yeah, that'll be another video. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, it, there's there's so much. I mean, we could. I mean, we're going to be painting here, but I mean, there's so much that we could we could be showing you that, um, and it's just too much to fit into one video. So we're going to be uh, kind of spreading all this stuff out a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna start. Cause yeah, go ahead. I'm going to paint while I talk, so I will yeah. listen. Yeah, that's just that, that's that's kind of what we're we're trying to do here. We're trying to uh, we'll we'll be painting. You can see. watch us paint and that type of thing. Ask questions. We'll answer while we continue. So uh, keep firing off those questions. After you paint the mini, how do you store it? Depends on the game. Yeah. Uh, some games have really good storage solutions that will protect the miniature for you. Uh, if that isn't the case, then you'll have to either find some kind of storage solution yourself or just seek out the storage solution that is made by some aftermarket company like uh, Broken Token or Meeple Realty or uh, there's one in, um, in Europe called Feldher that uh, has some pretty good um, foam uh, inserts. There's also what? What is that? Uh, army. Army container, or I can't remember what they call themselves. The company is um, it's Army something, uh, but they have a whole bunch of uh, cases that oh, are yeah, who you're talking about. that um, are um, those are specifically specifically for designed games workshop. Um, normal miniatures, however, for me. Um, as long as you've sealed them with a, a good sealant. That's true too. Yeah. Uh, usually, what I like to use is a UV resistant Krylon matte spray. Um, so after purchased that, purchased at Walmart. Purchased, yeah, Walmart, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, yeah, um, Amazon. Um, after that, I mean, I, I will literally throw my miniatures around, and and I don't mind or care because I know I've sealed them enough where they're not going to chip. So I don't have to worry about it too much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, sealant does do a very good job in protecting the models, and it, it probably protects it more than they really need to be protected, especially if you have some of those different storage solutions that are out there. Yeah. I know, I mean, if you're going to have your miniatures handled a lot. Say you're playing Blood Rage, um, Zombicide, things of that nature, newer ones like that where the miniatures are getting moved around, tossed around, especially if they're zombicide and you're moving zombies and tossing them out of the way after killing them, you're definitely going to want to make sure that you've protected your, um, your hard work and time. Because, I mean, honestly, you're painting your miniatures. It doesn't take minutes. I mean, sometimes you can sit there for hours and working on one miniature. Yep. Um, and you want to make sure that you're protecting that investment, I guess, of time and energy. Uh, definitely, definitely want to get sealant. Are the heavy hitters, are they primed already? So these uh, heavy hitters are not primed. Um, however... Look at you I, using I sound, a wet palette. I you're so weird. fancy. Um, I've, just, I've, I've painted enough where I knew that I wouldn't need seal, uh, primer for these. Um, which is a, miniatures. which is anathema for some people. Um, <laughs> so, like I, I could tell, like right out of the box, um, these also have a, a pre-wash on them. Um, not at, not as prominent as the Lords of Hellas Sundrop, um, but you can tell that they've been washed already um, with a dark black. Um, and by wash, I don't mean you know somebody put them in the washing machine and sat there and gave them soap and water. You don't? No, I mean, well, they, what do you it, it's, mean? A, it's a very thin black paint, um, thinned down to the point where it's basically water, and it's just brushed over the miniature to give it some definition. Uh, basically what I'm doing, I'm not happy with the fact that they came all solid colors. The GKRs, the, uh, the Giants, are painted completely 
and I actually there's a few spots on them that I'm going to touch up as well uh, that I'm not happy with, but that's neither here nor there because I'm just <laughs> a little bit odd when it comes to painting. But I just wanted to give them a little bit more definition when they're on the board, so I decided that I was going to paint and do some upkeep, we'll say. Um, but if you do have miniatures that you're not sure that the paint will adhere, mild soap and water, uh, well, soap and mild, um, water and mild soap is perfect. Actually, what's in my water cup right now, um, I always put like a, like a half a pump of soft soap in here. Huh. Um, because while I'm painting and cleaning my brush off, it actually, uh, will condition the brush. So. He's so fancy. And I do have. I have none of that. Brush cleaner here as well. Um, this stuff is amazing. It will keep your brushes lasting for as long as humanly possible. Uh, brushes one? aren't human. What are the best uh, methods to strip a miniature? Um, consent. Wow. <laughs> you had to go there, didn't you? Uh, I have never actually had to strip a miniature. Um, and I'm not saying, oh, because I'm just a, such an awesome painter. I've just never had one that I needed to take the paint off of. Um, I've heard of a few things online. Um, if you, I mean, honestly, if you just Google stripping your miniature figure, and I don't even know how, what a good way to Google that would be, but um, I know Goo Gone is one of those things. Um, I've heard break cleaner. Um, the thing with stripping a miniature is that you have to make sure that uh, because there are different um, types of plastic, like I had talked about already, some of those chemicals will actually start melting the plastic. Yeah, decomposing your plastic. So instead of having a nice, awesome space marine, you will have a nice, awesome pile of goo. Hunk of goo. Yeah. And maybe, I mean, you want a damaged minion. I don't know. <laughs> maybe that's what you want. Yeah. Good way to go about it. I don't know what color this is supposed to be. It kind of makes me angry that it's not on here. But that's fine. Improvise, All adapt, these things are fine. and overcome. This is like a just make a happy, face. just make happy little GKRs, man. Can you talk about making mistakes during painting and what you do to? Do you have to re rebase the whole thing? There are no such thing as mistakes, only happy accidents. Happy little accidents. Um, actually, I don't believe in mistakes um, during painting. I believe that that is just something that you didn't know that you wanted. Um, <laughs> and fate helped you make that decision. Yeah. So if you do end up overpainting an area, like I'll sit here and make a mark on his thing, all he's going to really do is paint over paint it with over the same color. Again, yeah. um, the issues that sometimes you'll run into is if you've mixed colors and you're um, going about yeah. trying to go back over. Uh, the easiest way to avoid accidents is just uh, take slow down, take your time. Um, Nobody is rushing you to get the miniatures done except yourself. Uh, I, that's something I, I need to remember because <laughs> I never do. Uh, but, I mean, miniatures, they're easily fixed. So if you do end up with this type of paint, if you end up getting um, making a mistake, you can just put some... Uh, I have airbrush recleaner. I just made a mistake. I just made a mistake. Yeah, so I have airbrush cleaner, which what I would do, would, I would just pour a little bit into a pot and then um, actually brush that on to the, sp the part that I, you know, I made the mistake and continue to brush until that paint came off. Uh, that's pretty much the easiest way I could say to fix a mistake. I don't know what more I need to do for this one, so I'm just going to put it in there for now. What do you think about the backpack? Painting nice. plastic cool. and metal. Huh. Well, you, you know, painting plastic and metal, at least from my experience, because I used to, when I first started get, getting into painting, it was with a lot of uh, GW stuff. And, and back then, I think it was around fourth edition for Warhammer 40K, they, uh, were, they still had a lot of pewter models. Um, that maybe it wasn't pewter, it was some other kind of... Uh, it probably was pewter. Probably was, I don't know. I've just never painted metal, so I can't Yeah, well, can't we've also this. done Guild Ball. Rob and I did Guild Ball uh, last year, yep. and... Those ooh, are metal? 
Yeah, well, they, they're not anymore. They've come out with a second edition of the game now, and now they're now they're plastic. But uh, the first edition of the game were metal, and uh, what I found was there isn't a whole lot of difference after you get that base coat on there. Yeah, primed. You, yeah, once you get the primer on, there isn't a whole lot of difference because you're not painting on the metal anymore. You're painting on that layer of primer. So, but I mean, I could be missing something. I don't know, but uh, I don't. I don't think there's a whole lot of difference there once. Uh, you have that primer coat on there. That's actually what I've heard is what, what once you're able to get that first prime coat set mm -hmm. onto that metal miniature, there's not much difference uh, in painting at that point. Uh, most of the time, you want to prime your miniatures and get them, you know, with a solid color, base color. Uh, I just we brought this. Oh, well, I brought this today. Um, didn't feel like priming it. Like I said, I didn't want to. Um, ruin the blues that came with these is another reason why I didn't want to uh, prime them and the paint adheres just fine. So let's say you, you painted a miniature, you're not happy how it came out. Could you um, respray the whole thing and then start over? Well, I mean you could do that. I mean that yeah. is a valid option. As long as you didn't put very heavy, coat. heavy coats on them and you kept your coats thin you could do that, but you probably will be sacrificing some detail of the model. Yeah. Just because you have already put layers of paint on there, so some of that detail has gone away. Yeah, because you got to remember, each time you add a layer of paint, you're adding it on top of that detail. Now, if you're doing um, priming with a uh, spray paint, you are not ensuring that the recesses um, that you're painting are not going to be covered. And that's a big uh, issue um, with painting everything with a, a spray can. So that's why I end up using an airbrush as well, is because I can make sure and verify. It's a very, very thin coat. Yeah, and get the, and either ignore those recesses if they're supposed to be a specific color, or specifically hit those recesses um, and make them the color I want them to be. Right. All right. And Kenny is away from the chat. Yeah, he real is. Quick. So just it, it'll it'll be a few moments. He'll be right back. Yeah, we just want to make sure we're not ignoring you, <laughs> except you. I'm ignoring you. <laughs> you mean like the letter? Yeah, that person out there is like, what? Um, me? You're ignoring me? Maybe. Maybe it is you. Or maybe it's you. I don't know. <laughs> See, here's that stuff I'm talking about, man. Breaking? I didn't, I didn't get all of it. Oh, I thought you were breaking apart your miniatures. No. I'm not going to do that. I'm not a monster like you are. Yeah. Uh, going back to the whole basing thing, sometimes if uh, post-production miniatures are not up to my standards on the bases that they're on, mm -hmm. or if I need to get to recessed areas or areas that are covered by um, the miniature itself, I will try to remove them from the base. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, because it's important to paint the bottom of their feet, right? Yes. Because there's, there's going to be so many people seeing what's... For me, I like to make sure that everything is covered. Unlike the CIA, I am very good at removing things. Wow. Don't kill me. <laughs> Please. Yeah, do you really want to yeah. really tick off the CIA? I mean, seriously? <laughs> yeah, all I'm doing is this black, and it actually, I mean... It already looks like the tires. I mean, it's just it. No, that does look. It's a hundred percent difference. Like you've just done black on the tires, right? Yeah. All right, let me go ahead and pull this up. Here, Kenny, we're gonna put this in the thing, in the shot, just to show the difference. I mean, you don't need to get super detailed with these things. Right. I mean, it's up to you the level and the amount of time you want to spend doing it. All right, so I'm. I'm going to go on a little rant here. Oh, here we go. The one thing that I hate, and I know I'm not supposed to say that. What do you hate? I hate when people tell me that they're going to paint something. And then I end up seeing that all they've done is primed and washed it in a specific color. Oh. To me, that is not painting. That is, it fell into a puddle, and you could not get it out in time. Wow. And well, see... 
I'm actually thinking about doing that with my clans for Blood Rage. I will. So mm -hmm. you can hate it all you want, brother. Because oh, what I'm thinking about doing is uh, it's a base coat of white or some type of off-white on the entire nice model. Cream. Mm -hmm. And then you use uh, the faction's color, but in a shade or, or in a wash so that it, it colors the model, but it really makes all those recesses pop and it brings out a lot of the detail of the model. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, it's not this ultra realistic or hyper realistic paint job that everybody's wanting to do nowadays. It looks that. kind of like, um, it looks like kind of a like children chess pieces. A child did it. Chess pieces. No, it's gonna look good, man. You, go, you watch. I'm gonna make you eat your words. I'm gonna eat you. You gonna eat some crow, bro. I will eat all of your shade so you cannot do it and then have to paint it correctly. <laughs> I will say that that is a valid option if you are strapped for time, like Sam is strapped for time. However, if you come to me and tell me, "Hey, look at this awesome paint job," and you show me that. I will not like it. Well, prepare to not like it because I'm going to do that. However, I'm always nice whenever I see anybody's paint jobs, no matter what they look like. That's because I know the fact that it takes a lot of time and effort, unless you're Sam. Wow. Man. Shouldn't it's it, just shouldn't, keep on coming. Shouldn't have beat me. Or yeah, no, I shouldn't have beat you at GKR, huh? That would have been nice. And Shall if you haven't seen that, you should, you should not go watch it, and you should go watch Mythic Battles instead. <laughs> right, here's a question I'm not really sure I'm going to read it verbatim okay what are your thoughts on creating a solution with for example an easy flow additive retarder etc is it worth it so do I have I just painted something with some Vallejo uh, crackle paint actually you know what I do have it with me and I will show it off Ooh. Um, so I do like retarder. Um, it's not bad. Um, I have. I did not bring my things today with me. Um, I have the crackle paints. I have uh, the now chipping. That sounds like a kid's toy. The chipping medium. Johnny, did you bring your crackle paints? Yes, Daddy. Hmm. So I guess we'll put it over there. You want to move that over there? Uh, sure. A little bit, please, and thank you. Cheers. So on these, I use the uh, Vallejo chipping medium, uh, these player boards, so that I basically could give it a rusty uh, look. Like, you can see those scratches there. So what happens is you'll paint a, a primer coat. Um, you'll put down the coat that you want to show through, um, and then you will basically paint um, with those uh, those uh, special effects types paints. Um, so this one was just, the, it was the crackle, it was the chipping medium. Mm -hmm. So all I did was I painted the chipping medium right over that, um, and then I waited until it dried. And then I painted another color over the top of it. And then I waited until that dried, because like I said, painting takes so much time. Um, and <laughs> then what I did was I took a toothbrush wetted it down and then scrubbed at the paint to give it that cheap uh like i mean it looks that looks like it has been in a shop and somebody has yeah. messed around with it um but i like retarder i mean it does t make your paints last longer um things like that i don't have um i have slow dry medium that helps as well because that will give you a different blending technique um, but that's a lot more advanced stuff uh and it's not that i don't want to get into it but this was just I don't know. I don't want to like that's super advanced stuff. We'll just we'll just put it that way. It's super advanced, and if you're looking into doing that, I know that there are tutorials online. That's where I learned, because as I said before, I am not a professional painter. <laughs> I think people know at this point that we aren't professional painters. Well, they know because that. they've been watching us for more than five minutes. They know that I'm not. Well, me too. I don't know. You're, you're really, better than me. You're really good, Sam. Shut up. Those look like actual... You know what I hate? Those look like actual Marines there. You shut up. What do you hate, Sam? Painting? Patronizing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this one might almost be done for me. I'm giving up already, huh? I am... 
just because they did not mold this the right way. Oh, because now you're an expert molder. I do not mold. I do not do sculpting. I'm just saying compared to the artwork, this is completely different. So, and I'm sure there's people out there saying, oh, well, look, Sam's making his own figures his own. Why are you doing it according to the way it looks? That's just me. That's personal preference. I like making my stuff look exactly like the artwork. I usually do the same thing whenever I'm painting. Like whenever Rob and I do the uh, battling brushes, I usually try to paint the models exactly the way the game mm -hmm. has them in their artistic um, whatevers because I don't know what the... who. First of all, I, I usually don't know the person who's getting it because it's not, it's not for me. Um, but then on top of that, I don't know what they're... What their likes and dislikes are is that is that as far as that's concerned. Now we did have some people one time, uh, a guy one time, ask us to paint um, uh, the the guild ball minis that we did a certain color with certain uh, football teams, NFL oh. football teams <laughs> scheme paint schemes, okay. and so we did do that. But unless we have like those kinds of requests, we don't worry about it. I know some of those words. Football team, you lost me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is All right. <coughs> throw that one over there. Just throw this one that. over there? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if there's a static shot or Boop. You want of yours done? Yeah. Uh, working on it. I'm gonna do another thing real quick. I'm going to use this, I'm going to use this, um, this uh, lead belcher up. Just it's so everybody knows, if you tuned in expecting us to finish miniatures. Yeah, we're not going to finish any of these. <laughs> we're just, we're just, uh, this is kind of more of a, a painting Q&A than it is like a tutorial on how to paint, although we'll answer any questions that you, that you throw at us. I know there are people out there that wonder, hey, who's that Vernon guy, and why does he paint all your stuff? And that's because Tom keeps me making pink paint. Yeah, I, I, I hope I, he's I not will, watching. I will say that, that Tom is the one that that asks Vernon to paint all the time, most of the time. Oh yeah, Jason. Every once in a while, it's Jason. Yes. Well, uh, what are your thoughts on basing a mini with resin? I have acrylic bases. Super glue is not sticking. Plastic glue doesn't work. QW recommends PVC glue and acetone welds acrylic, but melts polyester, poly string. Yep. So wow. what you're going to need to do is you are going to need to find a miniature um, drill. Um, I do believe that Citadel does sell them, but I, I probably... I, oh, you're talking about posting? Pinning. Pinning, yeah. Yes. So you're going to need to pin those miniatures. What that means is basically you're going to take that acrylic base, you're going to drill um, however many holes you need. Obviously for this guy, say I would draw two, um, and then I would drill them um, into the bottom of his feet. Uh, you get these tiny little metal pins, you place them in there with the super Basically glue. a paper clip that you can cut into different yep. sizes. Um, and then you uh, set the mini on, uh, miniature on there with uh, a little bit more glue, uh, and then you're, you're good to go. It's not going to move at that point. Um, you, you don't have to worry about anything. I mean, it's pinned, literally pinned down, which is where the name comes from. Uh, so if you're trying to do that, definitely you're going to want to look into getting um, the miniature drill and some pinning material. <coughs> but I do feel you. That's actually why I don't I've rebase never had, a lot of I've my never things. Had, I've never had to pin anything. Well, a lot of people like to rebase. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I got that. I got that. But I, I've never had to, that's yeah. all I'm saying. Because games nowadays, I mean, you, they don't want to um, block the artwork. Yeah. And I do feel, you know, I feel that. I get it. Because um, they're like, oh, you know, look at this awesome artwork on, say, Rising Sun. Uh, but I can't see it through the bases. But I painted right. my miniatures all awesome. Yeah. Well, guess what? You're going to have to remove them from the base and give them new bases. Do you have anything against resin? I don't. Um, actually, I own Kingdom Death, uh, and I have those miniatures. Those are a semi-resin. Um, I've actually, uh, what was it? 
I have painted a few different, um, I painted a lot of different materials, but I have painted resin stuff. I like that. Um, it feels to me like the paint actually goes on easier on a resin. Um, it spreads hmm. farther, is what I guess really? what it is. Yeah. I feel like, um, well, not spreads farther, it takes it. Like, um, you know, it soaks it in. Soaks it in. Yeah, whereas plastic, you're kind of sitting there, you're dragging it across. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's it is what it is. I like it, but, I mean, I have nothing against resin. You know what I mean? Oh, man, look at that. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew. So I don't know if anybody, well, I don't know where my hands are. I guess my hands are there. Um... Are this, we not? Are we not good shots? This is my awesome technique in making it look like there's stretch or uh, like scratches. I just run my finger over it after I'm done. Sorry. What's that? So this one, I'm making him look like he's got scratches. So I'll paint it. Yeah, and yeah. Rub it just with rub my it, fingers. rub it with yep. your finger. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, my hands are completely different colors and things like that. Like I used to, <laughs> I used to worry about it when I was airbrushing, and I bought gloves and everything. Um, but I have since stopped using the gloves. Like, I just don't use them anymore. Honey badger don't care. I use the, I use what I have. All right. Ooh, this is going to be fun. Look. <laughs> you get it on the... No. See? What? TH. Oh, my goodness. See, this is where he gets crazy with his paint jobs. Um, he actually makes sure... I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, yeah, he's he's lost some... It's a few sandwiches shy of, shy of a picnic. And I'm also just a little bit jealous because my, my hands aren't, aren't steady enough. <coughs> Look at that, man. He's like a sniper. Do you feel like painting, painting minis uh, with low-cost paint cheapens the look of the game? Yes. No. no. If it's a bad paint job. Okay, everybody's gonna have bad paint jobs. All right, when so low cost, out. low cost paint equals low cost results. No, it, I, you are painting with Citadel, not Apple. I don't care. That's all I'm saying. Look, if if a guy, look, this is this is where we disagree a little bit. If you cannot, okay, if maybe if you, maybe if you don't even, <sighs> you don't want to afford Citadels or Army Painter or you care Scratcher, huh? Okay. Or Army Painter, or you know, you don't want to, or Vallejo, or anything like that. If you don't want to afford any of that kind of stuff, or you don't want to buy that more expensive paint, don't worry about it, and just work with what you have. And maybe later on, sure, fine, you can go down that more expensive route. But if you're not entering it into a contest. You do not need to worry about it. This is for, no, it's not. This is not for anybody else's pleasure but your own. So um, that's, that's, how I, that's how I view it. That's how you view it. Yes. However, so if you're using, if, if that is the factor, but you are not trying to put any time or effort into it, and you are sitting there, and you're not looking anything up, you're not doing due diligence on making sure that you're doing certain techniques correctly, you're not thinning down your paints, you are going to get subpar results using subpar materials. I mean, to me, that's, that's anything you're going to get. Um, trust me, I know, low is bitter. <laughs> that, <laughs> Thank you, military. That is our, our model. Um, however, I mean, I, I started out using Artist Loft paint. Um, I did. I ruined this. I'm kind of done now. Oh, you ruined it? Yeah, because I started talking and got all animated about. You, you ruined it. About. But subpar paints. Yeah, um, but these aren't subpar paints. So how could you have ruined it with sub with non subpar paints? So, <laughs> if you're gonna put in the time and effort, you can do decent work with Artist Loft. Um, that Kemet copy that I own, mm -hmm. it's okay. I will say that it is okay. Um, it's not as good as the one that Tom has because that one was done well later and uh, with regular paint. But again, it doesn't look bad. 
No, my my copy does not look bad, and I keep my copy around and do not. So people were talking about um, stripping and doing paint like that. I have, to me, what I consider a very subpar version painted of Kemet. I painted it. I know it's subpar, but it was also one that I did three years ago, two and a half years ago, when I first started painting. Again, it's your definition of subpar and somebody else's definition of subpar is probably vastly different. Yeah, that's this is what I've heard. So, and this is why I think, you know, it, it's it's better just to enjoy yourself and get the models to look the way you want to, you want them to. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you're not, I mean, don't worry what I I think. I'm not the one sitting there paint, playing your game watching you paint. I mean, this is just my opinion. But to be clear, he would not play your copy. No, I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> Have you ever used painting markers like the ones used for Gundam models? Yep. Yes. Um, actually, if they you... Work, if you get the fine tip ones, work pretty good for eyeballs. Okay, well, no, I... Sure. I can't... <laughs> I can't speak to that. However, my ice cool was painted with markers. Yeah, with markers, yeah. Um, just because I didn't... Uh, I wasn't happy with the During way. the live stream last year. Well, no, that was right? actually... That was paint. That was that was me painting, oh, and I didn't like the way that those. I mean, they came out good, but it took me too long, so I went and bought painting markers so I could do mine quicker. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah. So my my ice cool. Yes, you're probably want, saying to yourself right now, why ever would you paint those stupid penguins in ice cool? There's no need. Because Vernon has a sickness. You've never met me in person. <laughs> Honestly, it, my Oni Tama is painted. So, I mean, if that tells you anything. And he, he also painted his copy of, uh, oh, what was the name of that game? Uh, where you painted the white buildings white. Uh, now, Santorini looks awesome. Santorini, painted. there you go, Santorini. So, what I did with Santorini, I didn't actually just paint them white. I used yes, he did. a spray paint that gave um, a stucco finish to oh. the um, buildings. And it looks 100% different sitting next to a store-bought model. And also my heroes are painted. Well, not my heroes, but my, my folks are painted. Your folks? My folks are painted. Do you feel the army cater system okay. is cheating? This? Or that? That. Army sister. Uh, the army cater system. Do you, do you feel it's cheating? <laughs> Quick shade. Mmm. It's not cheating. Um... I don't like the dipping method. That's what they're talking about. Ah. Uh, yeah, but with Army Painter, they mean doing at least two, three colors and then dipping to give it the auto shade is what they're talking about. I don't think it's cheating. I just, I don't really like that. I don't like that product. It's, um, and I'm not saying Army Painter has a bad product. I'm saying I don't like it. I own it. I have tried to use it. Um, it did not turn out the way I wanted it. Um, I felt like I could do better using a brush on shade myself. Um, and actually, I mean, I have Army Painter shade. There's just not here right now. Um, but it's not cheating. I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's for speed painting, honestly. I mean, it's a speed paint yeah. uh, process. Mm -hmm. And that's what they bill it as. So, no, it's good. It's just, it is what it is. <laughs> it's a quick and fast. Yeah, it is a down and dirty system. Which isn't always the best. Yeah, that stuff gums up worse than, um, sometimes worse than your spray paint primer will, so take that as it, as it will. Uh, do you paint your meatballs? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Actually... <laughs> Um, so the second edition of Robinson Crusoe comes with orange bread um, and some uh, some wood and bananas that are just orange or b yellow slivers. Mm -hmm. So what I did, oh, and the fur. So what I did was I actually painted the bread to look like toast. I painted the fur one side to look like a tanned hide and the other side to look like fur. 
um, and then put the lines on it too so it looks like it was folded out and then I put black lines on the bananas to make them look like they were bananas and also the wood I stained them after adding a darker brown to make it look like they so yeah, so, I, I yeah. Paint, if I've painted. If you're, yes, a simple if you're question. Keeping, if you're keeping track, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> they needed, needed to be painted. I mean, no oh, offense, no offense to Portal, didn't. but there's no such thing as orange bread unless there is in Portland. I don't know. Do you favor clear coating your figures with either a matte lacquer or dull coat to protect the paint job? So I always matte finish my miniatures. Um, which one? Do they have, I matte finish my miniatures. However, if you go back and look at, I think that you can see it in the live play of Mythic Battles, um, the Hydra. So the Hydra has a couple special effects on it. It has the saliva, um, and it also has, after the fact of sealing it, I went back with what's called <laughs> An Ard coat. Ard coat. Yes. Um, basically, what that does is it gives a glossy appearance. So, um, a lot of miniatures, whether or not they're big or small, I try to do their eyes after I've sealed them in Ard coat because it gives a glossy finish. So, I don't like doing anything that's not supposed to be glossy, glossy, and I don't like anything that's supposed to be matte, matte. If that makes sense. Have you ever painted figures in a neon paint? or try to add shadows of the figures to their bases? Yes, um, long time ago, uh, actually two years ago, I painted someone's set of Kingdom Death Monster, his, the first starting heroes, the Butcher, the Phoenix, the Watcher, and the Lion. Um, the starting heroes, if, you, if you've ever seen the game or if you haven't, they're, all of them are carrying a lantern. Mm -hmm. um, the Watcher actually has lanterns on himself. Uh, so what's kind of cool about that is what you do is um, one side of the miniature, obviously, you'll do lighter color, and then the, dark, the, the opposite side you'll do a darker. So yes, I mean, it's possible if that's what you're asking, but yes, I've done that as well. Uh, somebody, uh, I just watched Sarastro's painting guide for the first level survivors for, for um, Kingdom Death? Kingdom Death Monster. And it is an amazing process. The dude is like a legit painter artist working on a plastic canvas. It is amazing. So uh, you can go check his stuff out. He does a lot of good work. Um, I usually only point people in his direction if they're looking for something, you know, of a more detailed question like what you just asked. So, uh, because... I haven't seen that one. He's, he can... Hit the level of work that he does, it's like, I'm never going to be able to do that, so why even try? You know, so... Uh, I, I usually don't point people in his direction if you're just wanting to get into the hobby and, and try to try it out because it can be kind of daunting, the, the kind of work that he does, because he makes it look so easy, and it really isn't. Yeah, I've seen his <laughs> as, stuff. As it's far just, as what he's doing. It's just effortless the way he goes through, and he's like, oh, and now we're going to do this. He yeah, has a nice yeah, yeah. British accent, too, yep, so yep, it's yep, nice yep, calming, yep. watching him. This now, question is for Sam. Yeah. It's, uh, have you ever... Consider painting your memoir 44 minis. No. <laughs> it's too small. I, I don't. There's no such thing. Yes, there is. What was it? What, what have I painted that's that small? I know I painted something. It's too small for me. I, I'm, I'm having trouble with these models. And uh, memoir 44 models are like half the size of these. Well, not exactly half, but that's what they look like, at least in my eyes. So, yeah, no, I've, I, I would never, I would never uh, go that route with memoir 44 there's something that small that i painted and you yelled at me because i painted it well i didn't yell at you yeah. i just in said a, you were in a joking manner you said you were crazy and you have a sickness yes i don't remember there's what a it difference. was if somebody can come up with a small tiny game with miniatures that i probably own chances are i've painted it and it's you know i painted the eyes oh <laughs> star wars rebellion Oh, that's right. Multiple copies of Star Wars Rebellion. Yeah. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they have a question here. 
how do you feel about Kickstarters showing fully painted miniatures, professionally painted miniatures, on their uh, as part of the Kickstarter? You know, I, I don't I don't really necessarily have a problem with it because it's showing you what is cap what your what your what is possible I guess you could say what is potential now if they only show you the painted miniatures and they don't tell you that it's coming unpainted unassembled oh, yeah. even yeah that's that's definitely shady that's definitely wrong but more often than not the Kickstarter will show you the you know the 3d renders yeah. and, and that type of stuff and, I'm and always you, wary can, of those. you can tell that they're not painted they're, they're going to have to be painted um, so I, I don't know. I don't have a problem with, with uh, Kickstarters doing that because it shows you the level of detail that the model has. And so I, I think that's important. I don't have a problem with it mostly because I am one of those painters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do with that thing. Yeah. Um, well, no, I meant one of those people that they contract to paint oh. them. Well, uh, well, well. So, I mean, there is... Get a rose on your nose. I don't mind it. I'm, well, I didn't mind it even before I got into doing it for some people. Um, basically, because I at that point could see, oh, hey, like Blood Rage is a perfect example. Um, the artwork only shows you so much, um, and for me, that's huge because I like to go off the artwork. So when I think it was Roglin Studios ended up showing showcasing off his um, painted copies. Uh, I was I was thrilled because I was like, oh, that's the color I'm looking for, <laughs> and that's why I don't mind it at all. I mean, I was like, oh, that's perfect. I was like, this is you know. So what I do is, when I'm at home, I will end up pulling up on the TV um, the specific model I'm painting, and then just start painting that model and go off of uh, that. So yeah, I have no problem with it. Now companies that end up charging you to paint. Uh, miniatures and then delivering subpar results that's a whole different story I haven't heard of any that ch charge sub subpar results but I've heard of quite a few that are outstanding right now um, people are waiting on their painted miniatures hmm. I will say the sun drop technology quote quote from Awaken Realms mm -hmm. is really interesting I did get to see the um, the sun drop miniatures uh, one of the guys I played with has those and I didn't I don't mind it for non painters I mean that's what I keep hearing from my friends oh well I bought it because I'm a non painter um, they looked great on the larger miniatures which I thought those were the only ones that were going to be sun dropped however they sun dropped those tiny ones Sam hmm. really yeah. Yeah, huh. and it looks like they just kind of dropped it on some of them, and there's like pools, and they didn't move it. So, mm, yeah, that's unfortunate. The larger ones are nice with the sun drop. However, I mean, I would still paint them anyways. Hey, have you got any Nuln oil? Yeah, it's over here. Okay, I do. Speaking of shades, yeah, yeah. What I'm doing here is uh, I've I've painted a little bit of uh, Ustabi bone. On the on the chest uh, crest on the um, on the dark angels, and then I went back with some Agrax Earth Shade and and did over it. And I made I made some mistakes, and you'll probably still be able to see some of them. I'm going to put it in front of the camera, the close up camera, in just a little bit so you can see it. But uh, I'm going to do the uh, null oil on the gun first, so that you can kind of get uh, that process that's there. Um, so in case anybody was wondering, Agrax is a brown shade. Yes. It's an earthy brown, yep. and Nuln Oil is a black shade. It is um, works great for metal guns. Yes, because then um, it'll you darken a, the metal. Do you have a shade brush, by the way? I don't. No. What, you can use that one? Yeah, that'll work. I just want to, the guns have, I wanted to, yeah, go ahead. Have you thought about painting your Star Wars Rebellion set? No. <laughs> Again. The only thing I would probably paint from those things would be the Star no. Destroyers. Oh, I thought you were going to say Stormtroopers. No, the, st the Star Destroyers and the uh, and the Death Stars. That's about the that's about the size that I go to. Anything else is just too much, too How small. How do you feel about the uh, Joan of Arc? 
miniatures that come with that? Uh, that's, uh, I haven't actually seen a whole lot of those miniatures up front and close. I mean, I did, but it was like uh, Gen Con last year. So it was a while ago. Um, but no, I, I like everything that I've seen so far, but just realized that I haven't seen all of it. I've, I've only demoed it once. But uh, it, it was amazing when I did demo it. Those are the 32 millimeter ones, correct? Yeah, they're very small. Yeah. Well, that for, dragon is very huge. For yes. For Ernan, uh, have you finished painting your um, your core box for Mythic Battles? Yeah, yes, I have. He's painted everything, actually. And, uh, how long did it take you? Haven't you got everything done? No, I've, um, I've been painting these in size mm -hmm. for reasons. For reasons. Yeah. Um, how long did it take me? Two weeks? Around there, I want to say about two weeks, and that's not. So I have a normal job. Um, <coughs> painting is not my job, and this is why I am not a painter. Um, I work, um, and then I come home, and then usually I take a nap, and then I paint for the rest of the night. Um, most of the time, my painting sessions last between four or five hours. So figure four or five hours times, actually times eight days. So no times 10 days, so 80 hours painting time, roughly. 80 hours a week? Yeah. Dude, what is wrong with you? I Have you ever used permanent markers instead of paint? Permanent markers? Like, yeah. like, markers. like Sharpies? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, don't, I, haven't. I haven't used Sharpies. I've only used those paint ones. Um, and actually, Sharpie makes the ones that I bought, so technically, yes. But not actual like black and, and I do know that people use the uh, the blacks for the um, eyes actually quite often. So yeah, maybe that's what they're talking about. Because you were saying that you, you like to use those for eyes. Yeah, I, well, I have used them in the past. <laughs> All right, how you doing there? You coming to a stopping point? Are we stopping? Are we done? And in a little bit, yeah. Not not too far down the, the path, but yeah, it's it's definitely on the horizon. All right, so let me go ahead and put this guy up there. And all the viewers are saying, "My eyes." I know, right? So that just gives you kind of an idea of what I've done, and and really that's just two steps. Um, of and he's been working on that model the entire time. No, I have not. <laughs> I've been working on three different models. But um, maybe I can move him around a little bit too. But um, uh, let's go that way. Let's get the uh, different colors that are there. That null oil over the gun fades into all of those different recesses and really provides that shading effect that you want to have. So, and, and again, it's, it is not a difficult process to get that gun looking the way it does. It is very simple. Um, it's probably the easiest part. It's, it's even easier than uh, doing the, doing the, um, the actual base coat of it. So, not difficult at all. Just takes a little bit of patience, a little bit of time, that's all. But um, it's really rewarding for the most part. A couple questions here. Yeah. Did you guys start off start out building model kits when you were kids and then moved to painting minis? Or is it just based on the games you play, want to paint them to play with them, not a hobbyist? I don't know if that'll work, but I'll give you that so you can speak. Yeah, it that's cool. Um, it, it's, for me, it, it uh, yes, I did, I did do uh, models when I was a kid. Um, but that's not where I got into the hobby. That was just something that, you know, uh, me and my dad did or my stepbrothers did together and... And that was just something that we did. It wasn't really kind of a, an entrance into this hobby. 
it was just something that we did as kind of a family activity type thing. So, um, and even then, it wasn't really a lot of painting that was going on. It was it was just uh, putting the model together. Hey, look what I did. Okay, what's next? You know that type of thing. Uh, for me, I didn't get into this uh, until, well, until I didn't get into this. I guess I didn't have anything better to do. Honestly, <laughs> is what it boils down to. Um, I saw some. I, I had time. Um, I wanted to try it, so I started doing it, and that was three years ago. Well, two ish years ago, but I would say three. Just to what make. is uh, the sun drop technology? So, if you guys look up the Kickstarter for Nemesis, Nemesis, or you the Kickstarter for Lords of Hellas. Uh, basically, what that is is they take your um, dry um, gray miniature and then they uh, basically dip it, similar to the um, army painter method, in some uh, basically what's known oil. Are you using it? You scare yeah. me, but it's open. You hush. Uh, and so it gives it a shaded effect. So that's basically all it's doing is shading your miniature for you. Um, so when you get it out of box, you get a you know cool looking mini instead of a, uh, a, a lame gray mini. What board game with miniatures do you suggest for starting out? Painting? Zombicide. You cannot ruin zombies. Well, it, technically you can. Well, I mean, if you're going to ruin it, basically all you do is you just put uh, blood over that spot. <laughs> So, That's true. Yeah, so you can't really ruin it. However, um, Zombicide is quite expensive right. if you're looking to that's, just start out. That's where I'm leading to. What I usually tell people is, um, now it's not going to have a whole lot of detail with it, but just go out and buy a ten, ten bag, $10 bag of uh, soldiers, plastic soldiers at Michael's. You're hurting. It's and in the practice back it's and in the practice back on ten dollars before you start slapping paint on something that costs you eighty or ninety dollars. You could do that. Come on. Or or Reaper minis. Yeah, you no, could no, go no. that way. No, no, no. I was way. going to say if you're wanting a board game and you're wanting to try out painting, I would say for the most minis for the bang for your buck, either Last Night on Earth. Ma, nah, that's a good idea. And it's cheaper. Yeah, then they're really small minis, though. They're about the same size as Zombicide. They are? Yes. Mm. And or Run, Fight, or Die. Okay, that's a good idea. Which has a, a ton of zombie miniatures um, yeah. you could play. And, the, you know, the game's not bad either. <laughs> so, the game isn't bad at all, actually. So you have that... Um, so you're, you know, you're, you're getting. But you're still shelling out thirty, forty bucks for a game. Well, if, I mean, if you're already buying the game. Right, but you don't want to ruin it by messing it up with a paint job, which is what you said you would do earlier. Remember. If you bought bad paints. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't know. I think I mean zombies to me are like the best out of getting you know the most bang for your buck if you're going to do that. Uh, but Sam is right, I guess. <laughs> wow. <laughs> such such grudging approval there. Um, actually, you know what's even better than uh, Reaper and or the uh, <coughs> Army Men? Um, you could buy the new WizKids pre-primed Dungeons and Dragons miniatures. Oh, that's a good idea, They too. are phenomenal. Um, I actually got to paint some uh, over the holidays. One of my friends um, asked me, to paint some for uh, as a present for one of her friends, so I went ahead and did that. And what was even funnier is I posted it onto my Instagram, sealed because I kept the box and everything. And I posted it on there and I asked if anybody had also gotten a painted <laughs> copy. And I did get one person asking me where I found the painted copy. <laughs> Um, so if you are watching, Somebody I'm sorry. Somebody took the bait. Yeah, it was, it, you know, I, I painted it and then sealed it back up. I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question for Vernon. Uh, have you painted stuffed fables or mice and mystics? Um, the, the former I am working on, um, that is going to be a project in and of itself. 
Uh, the latter is currently primed at my house. Both of them are technically primed Mice at my house. Mice and Mystics? Yes. You've primed all of it already? I don't have Heart of Glorm or the other expansion. I only have the base game. Okay. But it is in its box right now, primed in order for me to paint. Can I have that other miniature, please? No. Thank you. Get yourself. Uh, so, yes, I do have Mice and Mystics, and I do have Stuff Fables. Stuff Fables is coming um, to a theater near you. Well, it is? They're making a movie out of that? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Is it possible to paint over Sundrop minis? Yes. Uh, basically, all that Sundrop is is a, it's a pre-prime. So if you are worried about getting it and you're a painter, don't. I've held it. It's basically the same kind of stuff as that's on here uh, in terms of like the uh, the economy spells. So the uh, what, what was the word I was looking for? Economy not priming. No, not priming style. But I guess it'll take the paint. Well, we'll just put it that way. It'll take it. Promise. It'll take it. And if it doesn't, you can send it to me. <laughs> All right. So they have black primer, but can they use? Um, Ooh. Can they use that for everything, or should they go out and get a white and or gray? Depends on what you're wanting to do. If you want a lighter, if your if your model is going to be a lighter colored model, then you want to use a lighter shade primer. Um, because it'll make those colors pop a lot better. Now, if you're using, like for example, Marines, um, what we did with these Marines is we actually used the base color of the armor, which was a Caliban green for it. But if I didn't want to do that, I, I would have, and what I've done in the past when I did my Dark Angels way back when in 4th edition, I used a black primer, and then I did a uh, green heavy dry brush over that dark primer. And what that did was, is it kind of accomplished the same effect as base coating in green and then putting in a shade on top of it. Um, the, that black primer really makes those recesses really uh, that much darker. So it really depends on what, f what the final color of your models are going to be. If you want it to be very bright, vibrant colors, uh, then you should probably go with a lighter shade uh, uh, base coat. But if you want a, you know, a lot of shadows, a lot of dark recesses, a lot of uh, darker, uh, shadowy type parts of the figure, then maybe black is better the way better way to go. What is your favorite genre to paint? Uh, Sci-fi. Uh, space Marines are my fine. Are, are I, I enjoy painting Space Marines probably the most. And I don't. I don't think Vernon has a favorite genre. He just likes painting. Yeah, I just. I. I. I paint for the fun of it. Honestly, like that's my thing. Like I'd love to paint. Um, and I never thought I was a painter. Never had any artistic ability while I was a kid. Um, I mean, I'm still a child, but uh, <laughs> never really thought I would have the knack for it. And until I picked up a paintbrush and started painting, honestly. Um, and like I said, I started with the the subpar paints, um, more f suited to a canvas than miniatures themselves. And then I moved on to the Army Painter. Um, then I moved on to Citadel. Then I moved on to Vallejo. Um, right, let's show the work that you've done on those yep. so far. Let's put it on the carousel over here. I mean, I'll sit here all day and paint. We'll move them around a little bit. Yeah, so that's what we've done so far. Yeah, and those look, I mean, just, it, it's four colors. It's just... Yeah, and it, and it does make it pop that much better. And of course, once he adds, I mean, he hasn't added shades or anything like that, I assume you're... you're uh, for these, I won't add any shading. Um, I like the way that they look in the, the artwork. Um, the only huh. thing, I have just I have a couple more colors that I'm going to add to those, and that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I would probably have added a wash, but, you know, again, it's whatever Vernon wants is his models. But, no, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, it's, um, it is not difficult. Definitely not difficult. It just takes time, you know. I, I actually posted on Facebook yesterday that the, the, the painting journey starts with a single brush stroke. Wow. That's deep. That's like some... <laughs> 
<laughs> That's like some fortune cookie stuff right yeah, there. Yeah, actually, man. you know what's funny? Uh, I gotta find it because if I say it, I'm gonna I'm gonna forget it. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So. My, oh, he actually. Yeah, I, I wrote it. it down. Oh, here so, goes. So I have an Y'all acronym. Ready? I have an acronym. It's called Prime. Oh. Painting really improves miniatures every time. Okay, well that that kind of um, goes against what you said earlier because the the specific question was, if you paint miniatures, can you actually ruin a game? Well, that you just give it to me and I'll strip them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and sign off here. We're probably I don't know. We might make this a little bit more of a. It's up to him really. He's he's got to travel a bit to get down here, but um, we might make this a little bit more of a. Uh, Irre- More, irregular thing. Irregular. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good <laughs> word for it. Maybe like you know, paint job. Every wow. <laughs> Just always looking for reasons and ways to stab me in the back where my feelings his. So anyway, we ha- are going to go ahead and get out of here. We want to thank you for joining us. We hope that uh, we've been able to impart at least a little tad bit of knowledge uh, to you. And uh, maybe we did something today that you watched us do as we were painting our models and said, hey, I can do that too. Uh, maybe it gave you a little bit of inspiration to get into the hobby. That's what we're doing. That's mm-hmm. what we want to try to do is yeah, spread the love of this niche of our hobby because it is kind of relaxing and uh, it's fun. And you can you can improve the quality of your your tabletop games by uh, just slapping a few coats of paints on your models. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, it is what it is. That's right. So thank you, Vernon, for joining us. Thank yep. you guys Always. out there for joining us, and uh, we'll see you guys on the flip side. I'm Sam. I'm Vernon. We'll see you later. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at DicetowerNetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.